If you've got a large appetite for props and movies, well, you got to catch up on some prop masters talking smack. Let's talk about food scenes and movies. Looks like the whole cast is here. I'm Scott Prop and Roll, and welcome to Prop Guys Reacting to Food Scenes. I got Mark, Poppy, and Matt in the back. Now, I don't think it's really an unpopular opinion when I say that most prop assistants and prop masters don't really care for food scenes. That is a true statement. Absolutely. We've probably done several hundred between us. There are levels of food scenes. You got some like Scent of a Woman, <laughs> where they don't touch their plate, and we love those. Yes. They're the best. Those are the best. Set it and forget it. So if you notice, no one's touching the plates, no one's even drinking, really. This is what we enjoy like if we get a scene like this. Mm -hmm. And it works for the scene because they've lost their appetite. Right. Minimal food interaction. Yeah. yeah. And they're at, they're, they're at dessert. But then you got this clip from Annie Hall. This business. His wife has diabetes. Di diabetes? Yeah, got it. Is that an excuse, diabetes? Diabetes. There's a lot going on here. You got, the uh, lady's got a slab of meat. She's putting it cutting it. A lot of times when you do multiple takes, this could be a problem with resets, but how does this? Well, you know, you, you can see uh, on the one side in the back, you know, Chris Walken, and you know, when he does a food scene, you know, he likes to not necessarily swallow, you know, possibly take a sip of water, you know, chew a little roll. I don't know what I'm talking about. The way this is covered is the single take. There's no coverage. Meaning that if it was planned that way, right. you can they just, don't have to match anything. They just do it. They just do it each time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they just throw some food out there and let the actors do what they want to do because there's no matching. But you still have to have plenty of food on standby because you really don't know how many takes you're going to do. And being the fact that this is Woody Allen, I'm not sure how he filmed, but being a feature, typically, you know, they make more of a meal out of it. <laughs> yes. It's a lot to chew on. Diabetes. Good. A good example of a monster food scene is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Harry Potter. Look at this spread. It's beautiful. Wow. That's all like dessert stuff too. Mm -hmm. Do not eat any of the treats in the middle of the table. In the middle of the table, all the things are piled up with the spreads and they look great on the screen, but they'll get you very sick if you eat them. Only eat things that are in, on the plates in front of you, all right? Yeah, you know, that's actually something I've told background before. I'll say, hey, this looks really good, but we've sprayed it with rat poison, so don't eat it. <laughs> of course, we haven't actually sprayed it with anything. Yeah. He said we sprayed it with things that'll make it look good, but it will get you sick if you eat it. Right, they probably sprayed it with like <clears throat> glycerin or rat poison. And he says that the stuff on the plate is good to eat. And if you look right. close uh, at the beginning of that, look what's on the plate. It's like crackers, marshmallows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all food that won't spoil or go bad. They can nibble on it all day. And you know, that's true with whenever you're working with kids, you know, they kind of forget that it's fake reality. Mm. So they'll they'll eat when they shouldn't. They'll they'll you got to stay on top of it. You could argue that maybe some of that stuff might act not actually be real food. Right, cuz a lot of times we do use fake food. Okay. I've got I've got a fake food story. Lay it on me. <laughs> okay, here's here's something I learned from TikTok. I've become friends with the the proptologist, and he was the guy that prop mastered uh, Hamilton on Broadway. Oh yeah. Um, he said that for raw chicken, that they use the breast enhancers that like you can buy on Amazon, the silicone breast enhancers that you stick in your bra. Oh. And so I looked it up, and sure enough, that they look like raw chicken but we don't typically use fake food as much as like theater does most of what the prop department provides has to be interacted with and typically edible yeah okay this is a clip from the movie matilda i think mid 90s uh -huh. Definitely. and this kid has to eat an entire chocolate cake yep. oh god and i think from what i read it took like two days to film it Boy. and not only were they they're having to match the makeup and everything um but after every take, they had a spit bucket. If you notice, look, the prop person's running in and he's spitting it out. Yeah. Oh, God. I was actually wondered 
when we talked about doing food scenes, this was one that came to my mind growing up watching this movie. Yeah, the spit bucket's interesting because early on I would provide it in scenes that there was a lot of eating, but nobody would ever use it. And so I was like, oh, well, maybe people don't use it. And then I can't remember what job it was, but suddenly it was like, oh, yeah, no, I we need, need a spit bucket. And they, yeah. every take, it was into the so. You know, that's another fun, fun job for the prop person is uh, dealing with someone else's masticated food. Yeah. Are we allowed to talk about how much food that Jared Padalecki will eat on camera? Oh, yeah. He eats a lot? It's a lot. A lot. We did a breakfast taco scene in season one where he ate, I think, ten breakfast tacos, including when we weren't rolling. You know, you bring something up. So the show we work on is set in Texas. One way, like we'll put license plates on a car to make it look like Texas, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. To help sell that it's Texas. But, you know, food helps represent a region, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's there's a lot of brisket. A lot of barbecue, for sure. A lot of barbecue, a lot of breakfast tacos. Yeah. Or uh, food also can represent help represent a time period. Like when we did The Sun with mm -hmm. Pierce Brosnan, we had a Civil War scene where the soldiers were having to eat hardtack biscuits, which are basically like the predecessors to crackers. Do you remember those? I do, and I mean, they were pretty gross. I feel like it was just salt and flour, and uh, we hired a local caterer to make it, so we researched it, we found the re recipe online, and made hardtack biscuits. All right, this clip is from Terminal, and Tom Hanks chows down on this burger. Now, one way we can help, it almost looks like there's no meat. Well, you can see it along the edge, mm. but it very well in the center could be they bread. Cut, they've cut out the... Yeah. One thing you could do is do like a crescent-shaped cut to where most of his bites aren't hitting meat, and he can, you know, do several takes of that. And now the next scene we have... What about Bob? Well, what about Bob? There's a classic dinner scene with What About Bob where he gets stuck at the house. And Richard Dreyfus hates him, but he's eating the food, and he's loving it. He's, he's just chowing down. He's like, oh, Faye, this is scrumptious. What is this, hand shock? Talking about the corn. Bill Murray ate a lot of corn. It's a long scene. It's a long scene, and he asks, they serve him more food. Yeah, he eats a salad. He eats a salad, like... he eats mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. And then you see Dreyfus eating a piece of chicken angrily. Will you stop that, please? A scene like this, it's, I, it was like a minute and 30 seconds long. That probably took all day to film, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Easily. Because there's a lot of dialogue. The prop person is having to constantly heat up the food, constantly replace it, and match the bite marks on the corn. There's a lot that goes into it. Depending on where you're shooting a scene, whether it's a practical location or a stage, you need to have some kind of kitchen set up. So a lot of times you're relegated to like a microwave or a gas burner. Relegated? What did I say? Regulated. Re re what is Relegated. It? Regulated. Re re Relegated. 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 Regulators! Regulators! <laughs> My own up! Sometimes you don't have a kitchen. So you have a microwave, you have a gas burner. Yeah, you have, we have like chafing dishes. Right. Like, okay, like we have a, a buffet grill. outside. Right, and a hot plate. Yeah. Ugh, God. Now, one of the most difficult of all food scenes is the granddaddy of all food scenes, Thanksgiving. Cut the turkey! <laughs> You cop the turkey! Prop master Joe Connolly says he's got a unique Thanksgiving prop food story, and here he is talking turkey. Hey, Scott. I worked on a show called Dynasty a number of years ago, and Thanksgiving was always a challenging food scene. Dynasty is the 1% of the 1%, and our Thanksgiving uh, dinner was supposed to be off the charts. What we normally do for Thanksgiving is you will order multiple turkeys because you can't uncarve a turkey. So we had six 20-pound turkeys cooked to match. Uh, for the carving scene, one of the actors is going to come in and shoot the turkey with a gun. Props and effects went through a couple turkeys just testing squibs and doing previous videos for the director. We had to have an additional six 20-pound turkeys cooked uh, to match. Uh, we had 12 turkeys on the day, and to make things even more interesting, we shot the scene backwards. We shot the aftermath of the turkey shooting uh, before we shot the turkey shooting, the scene uh, for Thanksgiving actually took two days. Now, I don't want us to sound like whiny babies or anything, but food scenes are tough because 
of the sheer volume you have to provide. You have, there's a big guessing game. You don't know how many takes you're going to do, so you do have to overbuy. There is food waste involved in many cases. And once you know the director, then you can kind of pull it back. You know, this director only does three takes, so we don't need 10 hamburgers. Typically, if it's your first time to work with a director, you overbuy. Well, you know, something to think about is whenever you see a food scene and it's say a family dinner and there's multiple people sitting around a table eating a full meal and that scene takes longer than a couple lines that means there's an entire prop crew behind the scenes with almost like a buffet setup where they're preparing plates and after each take they're running in and somebody's doing the drinks somebody's doing the rolls somebody's refreshing the plates and it is a big dance and it can be a real nightmare. Not to mention continuity photos. You gotta take pictures of where the plate is. If it got picked up, you need to write down in your notes, well, it ended up off screen and then it gets put back in again. Sure. Because a lot of times we'll be at a restaurant and we'll have a waiter come in, grab a plate, take it away, or put a new plate down. There's all these things we, that we call resets. And it's just, it's so much to keep up with. And a lot of times when we're getting the set prepared, we'll make remnant plates yes. where we can order one hamburger and fries and make it look like remnants of four platters of burgers and fries. So when the extra comes out, they see a, a what appears to be a picked over already half eaten uh, meal. Yep. Yeah, and that's so, great for realism because then you get to interact like, oh, there's a busboy, there's someone picking up these empty plates, or it gives it gives the AD something to also work with yeah, when and then, they're setting their background. and Right, and then there's not any footage where every single person in the restaurant has a brand new plate of food at the top of the scene. Right. Yeah. And last but not least, let's talk about food scenes where an actor has to eat something that is not necessarily edible or that may not be very appetizing like Leonardo DiCaprio having to eat a buffalo liver now rumor is he was eating an actual buffalo liver okay I was gonna say and so is this guy um, well no his looks fake see that could be where DiCaprio hit a real one and the other guy's like I'm not doing that because <laughs> his had a little bit of a gelatin quality to it where yeah. that one kind of you know but I mean liver is an interesting meat we've done a fake liver yes on the sun. On the sun, and we made it from a uh, we made it from a gummy bear recipe we found on on YouTube, and uh, it was just basically Jello with a lot of gelatin added into it. Right. And then I think we made it raspberry flavored, and uh, but they had to you you were there on set. They had to eat it for a long time. Yeah, you? yeah, and it was hard because it's sticky, and you you have to cover it in edible blood, which is. We don't make the blood, we buy the blood, and, mm. and it's edible, but it's not really edible. So you have to give it to the actors in that in that moment, because I tried it, because I just had, I felt like I had to, if they're gonna eat it, I've gotta at least be able. Mm -hmm. It was not good. Now, I will say, I think our scene was better than, uh, like, uh, what was it, Dances with Wolves? Yeah, because they eat a buffalo liver. It's You kill the buffalo, you eat the liver, it's the prize. Costner's buffalo liver, I mean, he didn't make it himself. Settle down, Kevin. It looks like jello. It really looks like jello. It's definitely jiggling. There's also Batman 2 with Danny DeVito eating the raw fish. Mm -hmm. And again, by all accounts, he was eating a real fish. Raw fish. Yeah. And it looks pretty gross. You like see the spit coming from his mouth to the fish. It, it, Oh yeah, there's like black stuff coming out. Oh yeah. It's, it's gross. <laughs> yeah, it's like it wasn't gross enough, so they said, let's add black stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know who else was in that movie, don't you? Christopher Walken. He was. He was. Can you do an impression of him? No. You know, he likes to possibly take a sip of water, you know, chew a little roll. Well, that's all I got. Thanks for watching Prop Food Scenes, and we'll see you on the next one. That's it? I guess that's the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. No use crying over spilt milk. You guys are telling puns? Y'all are feeding my ego.